thanks to the supporters of channel member Tyler Huffman. Oh my word, football manager annoys me at times. Faustino Andrin, arguably our best player this season, will be leaving on a free transfer in the summer. He's agreed a deal with Herenveen over in Netherlands somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere, frankly, irrelevant. He should be staying in English football. English football is the best football. The most annoying thing, here's your evidence, um, to sign a new contract with me, he wanted a wage of between 19 and 23,000 pounds down from his initial 21 to 25 and a half thousand that he wanted. Obviously, we couldn't go anywhere near that. We offered him 13,000 pounds a week and he turned it down. Hare and Veen are going to pay him 7,750 pounds a week. And we didn't even have the option to match it, try and convince him to stay. Football manager. Hello, welcome to Club 2, part 12 of Non-Need to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we face Charlton and Tamworth, both away from home, both in the league, as we get ever closer towards securing a return to the championship for Burton Albion for only the second uh, second time, in, or I guess first return to the championship, because they've only been there once before. Got promoted back in 2016, relegated in 2018, have never returned. Until now, we're taking Burton back to the promised land because we are... 22 points clear of third place Wrexham. They do have two games in hand, but there's only 13 games remaining. We're not going to get ourselves over the finish line today, but it is only a matter of time. We are finally back in something resembling form again. We're not relentlessly winning every game like we were previously, uh, but we are not losing games anymore either. We haven't lost a league game since losing to Wrexham back on Boxing Day. And uh, we are looking like a pretty decent side, a pretty decent side that obviously, as mentioned, isn't going to have Andrew in it next season. It's very, very upsetting because he has been phenomenal. But I guess we just have to accept that that's a thing. Um, there was also an offer for a, a, a pre-contract for Biancheri as well, which we couldn't do anything about countering. A pre-offer came in from somewhere abroad and uh, we offered Manchester United zero pounds to try and negotiate with him as well. They asked for six million. Turns out they did then extend his contract and he's not actually going anywhere. But again, it was like double back-to-back -back frustration. We had the Andrin accepting a pay cut to go abroad nonsense. Um, okay, it's not actually a pay cut, but it's a lot less than we've been offering for, offering him for a year. Um, and then the thought of losing Biancheri when he was going somewhere else on a free Sometimes football manager is a very, very frustrating game. And uh, this January transfer window has been one of those times. Uh, we only actually brought one player in in the end. Um, Finn as, as of course, we already know, left the club. Cole Stockton went out on loan as well to Wickham. We brought in one loan of our own. Um, include, well, I mean, we also brought in the goalkeepers. Actually, I don't think you met Taylor Richards, did you? Taylor Richards came in on a free transfer. We couldn't get Charlie Webster, who we'd been trying to sign for ages. He wanted Andrew in money. Taylor Richards was happy to come in on not very much money until just the end of the season. So he's basically our Azaz replacement as a backup for Andrin until the end of the season when we're going to need to replace them both because neither of them, well, Andrin won't be here and Richards won't be stepping up to the championship. And um, we signed a couple of fringe goalkeepers as well. Tolbert, I think you did meet. Um, we also ha got this guy, Daryl Ombang, um, as a third choice young goalkeeper. And then we signed a player on loan from Ajax. Felipe Rojas is an 18-year-old Argentinian under 20 international um, he's another centre-back so we've already got a very good centre-back on loan from Manchester United we now have one on loan from Ajax as well we've not seen him play yet because as soon as he arrived he I mean he was already off doing under 20 international stuff with Argentina so we've not actually met him yet uh, but he was cheap and he was available so he's in we certainly didn't need another centre-back um, but there wasn't really much available uh, money-wise we're still absolutely fine it's the weirdest period of transfers I've ever had playing football manager because financially we can theoretically afford whatever we want um, we've still got even with those new players coming in £10,000 a week spare on our FFP wage budget. Our actual wage budget has got loads spare as, as, how, as has our transfer budget um, but I just can't justify throwing crazy money at players. Our highest paid player at the moment is Joe Powell on £9,000 a week and he's earned it. He has been a superstar for Burton for years. He's been one of our best players for as long as I've been here. He's earned that contract. I don't want to be going out and giving 
15, 20,000 pounds a week contracts to anybody. Quite apart from the fact the board won't let me do it because of the FFP limitation. They won't let me go beyond it. So when we tried to sign Webster most recently, it still caps me out at 10,000 pounds a week because we can't go over the FFP wage budget. So we're kind of limited there. We weren't able to extend Andrew's contract. We're probably going to be losing um, Stevanovic for the same reason. Um, if we just look at contracts that are expiring at the end of the season, Philip Stevanovic, we only brought him in on a one-year deal because he was a bit of a risk. He has been a success, so we'd like to extend that deal. We didn't put a contract extension in because I'm a Wally. Um, and then when we try and do a contract negotiation with him... Um, he wants twelve grand, thirteen thousand pounds a week. We can't afford it. The most the board are going to let me pay for him is the six thousand he's currently on, which is a weird board limitation because that's less. That's what he's earning now. They're not going to let me give him a pay rise. Um, but if we exclude the highest earner thing, lock that in. Obviously, straight away he just turns it down. So that's another one who's going to be walking out at the end of the season. It's a frustrating, frustrating time, but. Let's not worry about the frustration. Let's go and win the league. This is the team for Charlton. We've got Whiteman in goal, a bat for of Samuels, Burke, Tomkinson. By the way, Tomkinson, finally happy to stay at the club. He no longer wants to leave. The only player he wants out is Lewis Brown, who wants to go out for uh, game time. And to be fair, Lewis Brown was brought in to be Tomkinson's replacement. He's now seen the youngster from Ajax come in as well. And Lewis Brown, unfortunately, he's just not going to make it with us. We should probably let him go back to Tamworth. Maybe when Tamworth get relegated, we will, because Tamworth um, are now down in 23rd place. They actually lost another manager. Paul Cook, who came in and replaced me, left with Tamworth mid-table. He's gone to manage Wigan, um, the club that he'd managed previously, and has now got them sat in mid-table, and Tamworth have dropped from mid-table down into the relegation zone, and we can... We can put a nail in their coffin today, um, which isn't ideal, but we will, I promise, send them Lewis Brown back if he wants to go. He can go and join up with them again in League Two, and it'll be a lovely little reunion. So, as I was saying, the team for the Charlton game, Whiteman in goal, a back four of Samuels, Burke, Tomkinson and Long, Purcell and Powell in midfield, Stevanovic, Andrin and Biancheri supporting Stewart up front. I am, by the way, I mean, as you can imagine, recording lots of videos quite far in advance at the moment because of this whole Christmas thing that seems to be very quickly approaching. So I haven't seen the comments. I assume the comments are all telling me to play Joe Powell as the attacking midfielder. I get it. It's definitely an option. He's better in the role that he's in. We love him in this role. I mean, he's played as a DM for me the whole time I've been here. He's scored nearly 25 goals in that time and got a super duper high average rating. He's been our best player. Average rating, goal production, goal assists. He just controls the game from there. If we were to lose Andrin, we could move him forward. We've got Raheem Harper who could play there. It's definitely something that's in my mind. It's not something I'm rushing to do, though. So um, that's why we're continuing to play him deep, because not every good player needs to play in the attack. He is running football matches and has been for over a year now at Burton, just from being sat kind of in front of the back four, but not really in front of the back four. DMs work very differently in FM24. In this role, in this world of the new positional rotations, playing a front four, a big gap, and then two DMs, you don't have a big gap. You can see how far forward these two guys are pushing. They're playing as central midfielders. This is what a central midfield two looked like on FM22. Uh, it's just you have to set up differently to have it work properly on 24 it's a it's a weird thing i guess it's just moving with modern football i guess that kind of is a dm role that they're doing they're sitting there deep as a double double pivot letting uh, everything else go on ahead of them and um, but they are still linking up it's just, it's just it's semantics that's all it is um andrin's just scored again he is in incredible form since agreeing his move abroad it's so weird it's i mean Maybe it's not weird because he was unhappy all season long because he wanted a new contract. It's it's not it's not that you know it's not that it's a surprise that he wanted more money. The surprise is he's accepted an offer on less money than we were offering him. Um, that's the bit that I'm frustrated with football manager for. I'm not frustrated that he's leaving. If he was leaving to go and earn twenty grand a week somewhere, which is what he's been asking me for, I would completely get it. 
It's the fact that he's leaving to earn less than we were offering that's frustrating. But as soon as he's signed that contract, his unhappiness has gone away and he's started playing like an absolute superstar world beater again like he was last season. So it's not really a surprise that he's now doing really, really well. Um, but it just means it's going to sting all the more when he leaves in the summer because we're potentially... Let's, let's assume... It's a dangerous thing to assume when we've just conceded the goal. But let's assume we are going to get promoted. We're going to be in the championship next year. We're probably going to need an entirely new front four and replacing one of the central midfielders. The defence is kind of okay. Although, obviously, we lose, uh, lose uh, what's-his-face from Manchester United. I want to say Thompson. I could be making his name up. Um, he's just he's the lone guy. For, I haven't learned his name because he, I know he's not going to be here forever. Um, what is his name? The kid on loan from Jackson, not Thompson. I knew it was something British sounding. Um, obviously, we'll lose him, which is not ideal, but the back four is generally okay. Goalkeeper's definitely going to need an upgrade, but Purcell will be gone. And then Ross Stewart at 31 with his injury problems, probably not going to make the step up. Stavanovic will leave on a free. Andrin leaves on a free. Biancheri goes back to Manchester United. So we're going to be heading into a cha- heading into the championship, a league that we are not big enough to compete in. And on our massive sponsorships that are great for us at this level, even though we can't spend them, will look like, like, look like change you find behind the back of the sofa in the championship. So we're not going to be able to compete financially and we're going to need to sign an entirely new attack. Which is, I mean, it is very troubling. For the first time in the entire save, I am contemplating maybe looking for a job. I haven't made a decision just yet, but I suspect my stock may never be higher, at least like in the, the short term, than it will be at the end of this season if we get Burton back-to-back promotions. Because I just can't see us doing anything other than really struggling next year and potentially just coming straight back down again. So... If there's jobs available in the summer, I am I am semi tempted. Like I say, no decisions made yet. I do like the fact that the story so far has very much been me staying reasonably local, and I like that. Um, so ideally, we'd want and we'd want the next local step up. If the Derby job became available, for example, that would be a beautiful piece of career progression. Uh, a much bigger club with a much bigger stadium with the potential to take them to the Premier League, which I don't think Burton have, without us having to spend an awful lot, an awfully long time and take some big risks to get there. And putting it really bluntly, I don't think I'll have a long time because I think if we start... That, that process goes one of two ways. Either I fail at it and get fired or I start to succeed at it and get headhunted. I don't see a scenario where we stay at Burton long enough to take them to the Premier League. So if we're not going to see the job through one way or the other, why start it? Why not see what's available this summer? It's it's something I'm pondering, letting you know the thought process. Obviously, I wouldn't dream of telling my players that. I tell you what, Biancheri is a very, very good player. If we could have signed him permanently when his contract was expiring with Manchester United, that would have been that that would have been the kind of signing that might have kept me at the club. But I expect I was talking was it last episode or the one before? I was talking about potentially spending the three million pounds to bring him in. He'd cost a lot more than three million pounds now, and he just continues to get better and better and better. I kind of wish we'd just spent the money, but. That ship has very much sailed. Uh, Long on the right-hand side, looking for a cross for Ross Stewart in the middle. Stewart can't quite get there. And there is Powell coming out of that defensive midfield position again that I was talking about before. He's just lurking on the edge of the area, ready for the ball to be knocked down by Powell. I don't know where Andrew is in that situation, but Powell definitely not playing as a holding midfielder. It's more just a starting position in the formation when we're defending he'll drop back in front of the back four when we're attacking he is very much part of the attack it's lovely to lovely to witness Aziz is going to come on for him and we're going to bring on Lewis Cherry up front um, who has now signed a contract extension he's one of the the next generation who will be around next season but obviously a player who couldn't get in our team in league one unless he has what is going on here they substitutes coming on 
I don't know what... I don't, we just had a rush of players as the corner came in. Tompkinson scored it anyway. I think they were the subs coming on. I don't know why we didn't just wait to take the corner until they were on the pitch. That just three of them charging forward together um, clearly caused enough of a distraction for Tompkinson to score. But as I was saying, someone like Cherit, if he's not getting in the team regularly this year, even if he has a massive improvement over the summer he would still be a bench player in the league above, you would think. He's not going to go from being a bench warmer in League One to a starter in the Championship, you would think. Uh, Taylor Richards is coming on. Um, Andrew in getting a little bit of rest time. And I think we're actually going to take off Biancheri as well. Harper can come on for him and we'll actually stick Richards out onto the right-hand side. It's one of the advantages of Taylor Richards is that he's got that versatility to be able to play anywhere across that attacking midfield three. He can also play centre mid as well. So he's uh, he's quite a, uh, quite a useful, versatile player. Very much, again, another example of a player who's not going to be a championship quality player for us. But while we're in League One and trying to get ourselves over the finish line, I think, if I do so so myself, quite an astute signing on relatively low salary just to plug a squad gap. Basically, sit on the bench in this seat that Finn Azaz was sitting in, but with the flexibility to be able to play a few more positions than Azaz could, which actually is probably more useful to us. So we've just banked the million pounds from selling Azaz and uh, got a roughly equivalent quality player. Uh, take his spot on the bench. So we are still capable of some good business. And Lewis Cherritt, still very much capable of scoring football goals. When he gets the opportunity to score, he does score. As soon as we've secured promotion, which hopefully will be with a good seven or eight games of the season left, expect Cherritt to start starting matches. We are going to give him his opportunity to nail down that squad spot for next year. And if he if he scores five or six goals in that run in when he's getting game time, then all of a sudden we might start thinking a little bit differently and deciding to keep him around. Also, we might be able to offer Stevanovic a little bit more money once we've got the promotion secured as well. So all is all hope is not lost on Stevanovic sticking around next year, but um the other two definitely gone. Right, let's go play Tamworth and almost seal their fate. Right, a couple of changes for the Tamworth game. We've actually got a little bit of cold and flu going around the camp at the moment. Um, so Cherit is suffering with that. Um, Clayton has just recovered from it. Uh, Lomwick, I think. Yeah, he's another one who's got the cold. Um, Sam Long's actually going to be out for two to four weeks with a thigh strain though. So not everybody is just down with a cold. Um, but it means Furlong comes in at right back and Clayton, now fit again, can come back into the team on the right wing, allowing Biancheri to go back up front and us to rest Ross Stewart once again because Tamworth are now rock bottom of the league. I don't think we need to be risking Ross Stewart against them. He's there on the bench. We'll bring him on if we need him. We're very lucky to have two very good strikers plus Cherit as an option who is... Uh, Pretty useful to come off the bench as well, as he showed in that last game. So Tamworth, now rock bottom, playing a disgusting, a frankly disgusting flat back six with so few players in the team that I actually recognise. It's hard to believe it's only just over a year since I left this club. Um, the only ones are my boys still there. Kakuri, Bennett, uh, Gene Kennedy, Regan Clayton... And then a Camrich up front. Adam Berry not even getting in the team. It's a sorry state of affairs. Um, but unfortunately, I think Tamworth probably are going straight back down again. And fingers crossed, don't collapse all the way back through and go back whence they came. Although I have seen it happen in Football Manager before. Um, once a very talented, handsome manager leaves. Although to be fair, Cook, who then left them after a year and went to Wigan, did a perfectly good job of them as well. Got them over the finish line last year, secured the promotion, finished above us. And they were looking good until he walked out on them. So it wasn't actually me leaving that's caused the collapse. It was him leaving. And ironically, uh, the Wigan team that he's gone to join are kind of still in a relegation battle of their own. So it's not as if he's gone there and performed miracles. If Wigan go down here, we're getting fired from there. So it's um, it's all kind of going wrong for everybody connected to Tamworth, apart from one handsome guy. Did I mention I'm handsome? Sometimes I feel like it's not mentioned enough in the comments, so I have to bring it up myself. 
fed up of it only being bots who think I'm pretty. Um, right, nil-nil at half time. That's not ideal, but remember, we do have our secret weapon, Ross Stewart, sat there on the bench, who'll be coming on with half an hour to go if things are not going our way. Clayton is just recovering from his little bit of poorly sick, um, so I don't mind sacrificing him, moving Biancheri out onto the right-hand side and carrying on with the, the front four that we had going in the last match. I mean, Clayton, worth mentioning, of course... Um, he's one of the ones who will be here next year. So we talked about needing an entirely new attack. Clayton has been probably our most regular starter on the right wing. So he's not somebody who needs replacing. Oh, it's good to be back at Tamworth. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah, yeah, remember that for sure. How could I How could I forget the Tamworth aliens coming out to say hello? Oh, Kev's back. Let's get the Tamworth aliens out. Lovely old stuff. Um, right, still nil-nil. We're going to offer... Some encouragement. This is top versus bottom. We really uh, we really shouldn't be struggling the way that we are. I think we are going to get Stuart on. And we are going to put Biancheri out there. Ross Stewart's going to come on up front. And we're just going to try a, uh, a slightly different shape. Get the big meaty boy to take on. I mean, Kakuri, from what I remember, not particularly big or meaty. He's six foot two. He's quite big and meaty. Okay. Bigger and meatier than I remember him. He's obviously been... Uh, Eating his what makes you big and meaty? Is it spinach? That's Popeye at spinach. Does spinach make you big and meaty? I could eat spinach. Um, right, we're going to take off Purcell. Kingsley Aziz is going to come on to play in central midfield. And uh, we've, I kind of want to get Cherit on as well. I think we will get Cherit on for Biancheri. And uh, we're going to go attacking. I wouldn't normally go attacking at nil nil away from home. However, it's Tamworth. We obviously want to come here and pick up a win. And also, it is top versus bottom. There is like 60 points, nearly 60 points separating us in the league table. We are a much better team than them. There's not really any excuse for us not to be winning. Andrin's going to come off. We'll bring Harper on and Powell will go forward into that spot like we talked of him doing. And Felipe Rojas is going to come on and make his debut at centre-back, hopefully not going to come on and make it. Oh, we've got two of these in one match. I don't remember ever having two alien invasions in one match before. Things are getting even worse. I, I mentioned things were going downhill at Tamworth. There's your there's your evidence of it. They're now getting multiple alien invasions a match. Uh, Whiteman rolls it out to Rojas, who plays it forward for Cherit. Knocks it down to Furlong. Furlong, the ball forward, looking for the forward run of Powell. It's hooked clear, uh, but not very far. They are trying to play it out of defence here. Kennedy just keeping things under control in front of their back three. It's horrible seeing them play a back three. Uh, Powell uh, plays it forward for Cherit, who turns beautifully, leaving Clayton for dead. Uh, Cherit with the cross. Ross Stewart is there. Ross Stewart has been fouled. You, I mean, there's no way he doesn't win a header at the far post. Kakuri has held him down, and you didn't even need to see it to know that must be what's happened, because if he gets on the end of it, he obviously scores. Powell has missed his penalty. I mean, it's their keeper has saved it, to be fair. But that's not the first time Joe Powell has missed a penalty for us. And that is a third alien invasion of the game. Poor old Tamworth. Stavanovic with the corner. And, I mean, the aliens are doing their very best to keep Tamworth to keep Tamworth in the league, keep them in the match. We've absolutely dominated them. We've had 25 shots and we just haven't been able to make the breakthrough. Um, I will uh, I will offer a little bit more encouragement. Aziz coming out of midfield, gives it to Cherit and now Rojas and it's forward to Furlong. Furlong to Cherit, who we know he's got the beating of Clayton at left back, finds his cross. Stewart's there again. This time he does win the header, um, but unfortunately it's straight into the crossbar. And I just don't think it's going to be our day. Those match stats, goodness me, Tamworth are desperate to show me that they uh, they haven't gone downhill since I left, aren't they? That can be the only motivation. But we have come here and not been able to beat them, which is it's not ideal. Um, let's have a, a little look at the league table before we go. I suspect the next episode is going to be a celebrating promotion because if we don't, like I say, it's one of history's greatest bottle jobs. We're 22 points clear of Wrexham. I can't sit here and do the Kev maths right now and let you know how many games we've got left until we can confirm it. What I will do is when we get the message through the media that says we could get promoted in the next game. We'll come back for that one and hopefully show you it probably won't be a trophy lift because there's a big gap between Wrexham and Plymouth. We don't need to see a trophy lift. We just need to see confirmation and some budgets because budgets for next year are going to tell us an awful lot 
about what we're going to do. Interestingly, next season's budgets are both predicted to be lower than the ones we've got right now, which is very weird. I guess we'll see what happens. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.